We love you. We love you and we thank you. There is no greater privilege than to be in your presence. And I thank you right now. I thank you right now because I perceive your spirit. I perceive you moving. I perceive you depositing. Oh my God, Rabbi, say, I, I perceive you depositing in every heart today, depositing in every spirit today. And we thank you, God, for open hearts. We thank you for open spiritual ears. We thank you because you are taking us as a church body to a new level. And we are ready to go there. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So as you know, as you know, we have been talking about every every month, according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, I choose a theme that I want to talk about because along with being a spirit-filled, prophetic, apostolic church and ministry, yes, I want you to know how to flow with the Spirit. I want you to know how to lay hands on people that are sick and they get healed. I want you to know how to cast out devils. I want you to know how to fast and how to pray and how to worship. And just be on your face in worship. But at the same time, you could be a very, very strong worshiper, but be a weak Christian. Did you know that? Because worshipers tend to be emotional. Go read Psalms. Mm. Sometimes it seems like you're, you're, you're dealing with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Well, I, I perceive the Lord and the Lord is strong and mighty. Oh, but woe is me because my enemies are coming to destroy me. There were moments, even though David was a man after his own heart, but psalmists and worshipers, we tend to be a little more soulish because it's in that being able to be soulish that we're able to connect with the tender part of God. But if you don't get strong in your spirit, can I get a witness? Amen. If you don't become strong in the word of God and in the spirit of God, you can be worship a person that loves to worship, but you're a weak believer. So some days you're up, some days you're down, some days you're, you're motivated, other days you're depressed. So you got, yes, I want you to be a strong worshiper, but I also need you to be strong in the word of God, to know God as a person and to know the word. Amen. And to know not just the written word, but the revealed Amen. word of God, where it comes alive in your life. Amen. So open your Bible with me. We're in first Kings. We're in first Kings and we don't need any background music today. So if you don't mind, if we can just turn that off because I need you to hear. See, what we're dealing with this month with spiritual fatherhood is very, very important to this ministry. I understand that this, this may be a, a subject that is misunderstood, and we talked about that last Sunday. You have people that use spiritual fatherhood, pastors or ministers that use spiritual fatherhood to, uh, to control. Amen? They use it to manipulate. They use it to, you know, to control people, to get people to do what they want them to do. Spiritual fatherhood and motherhood is never about controlling people, but it's about understanding that there's an impartation from God that maybe you received from your own spiritual mother or father. There's a deposit on the inside of you, and you are passionate. You are passionate about depositing that thing that's on the inside of you in other people that are called to you. And the people that are called to you, you are desperate. You're desperate to share with them and deposit into them what God has placed in you. Because if you didn't know, God is interested in legacy. Amen. God is very interested in legacy. If you look at the word of God, you will notice that everywhere he is referred to as the, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. Why? Because he is interested in legacy, not just a natural legacy. But a spiritual legacy, you know, those of you that know I'm covered, um, my spiritual father is also my natural father. He's an amazing, wonderful man of God who has lived a life of integrity since he was a young man. He has ran after God. He started preaching at 12. He has the, the track record and the history that we all wish we had. Can I get a witness? Amen. He's always walked with the Lord. He's always been passionate. He's always been running after God. There was never a season in his life where he turned away from the Lord. There was just something that was burning on the inside of him. And I didn't know how to appreciate that when I was a young girl because that's just my dad. That You just don't want me to go nowhere. You just don't want me to do nothing. You ain't never going to like nobody that I want to date. And you ain't never, you know, because the trick was you can date when you turn 18. But they didn't tell me there was fine print. So when I turned, I see, uh-huh. So when I turned 18, oh, now I can date. Yes, you can date with our approval. Right. Yeah. Didn't nobody meet the approval. So I still didn't get to date. Yeah. 
You understand what I'm saying? But as I got older, I started seeing how God was bringing him spiritual sons and daughters from all over the world. I saw God bringing spiritual sons and daughters from Africa, sons and daughters from Norway, from Spain, from Colombia, from Venezuela, from Mexico, from Costa Rica. I saw these people taking of his spirit. I saw these people listening to his tapes until the tape, the cassette tape in the thing would break because they would listen and listen and listen and listen and they would say, Papa, I want your spirit. Papa, I want your spirit. And now those people that were considered nobodies in their countries are now among the strongest men and women of God that are raising up generations, that are raising up armies, that are going into the streets every weekend with hundreds of young people to evangelize in the streets who have to this point led over a million people in South America and led them in the sinner's prayer, not caring what church they go to, go to any church they want to, but today make a decision for Jesus. Why? Because they received his spirit and they said, there's something that you carry that I need. There's something that's inside of you. And I started seeing this. And as I started to get older, a light started to come on. And I said, man, it sure would be a shame for all these people who are not his children in the natural to carry his spirit and to look like him and to talk like him and to carry his anointing and me, his own blood, miss it because I was too familiar. Miss it. To end up with his last name because I could never see him as the apostle. I could never see him as the prophet. I could never receive his correction. I could never receive. Why? Because I wanted to do my own thing. Because I wanted to be grown like every other kid wants to be grown. But I could have missed it. And there came a point in my life where I said, uh-uh. Okay, I see it. I get it. I want what you have. And when I began to connect to him, everything about the anointing that I carry changed. Everything about my life changed. Everything about my nature and my character changed. Why? Because I finally plugged in to the source that God had provided for me for where I was going. That's what spiritual fatherhood and motherhood is. That's what impartation is. That is what it is to be a spiritual mother and father when you're able to connect to the ministry of someone, to the life of someone, and know there's a river of power and of living water. There is something that I see on the inside of you. There's an integrity. There's a character. There's a love for God. There's a worship. There's a passion. It's funny because last night we're out there and we're on the porch and we having issues with sound. We didn't care. We just kept worshiping. And somebody came and then they went to go take a shower and they came back and they said, man, they still worshiping? Because they couldn't believe that we were still going. But sometimes you, if it's in you, yeah. it just pours out and you can't help it. Yeah. Amen. So I'm teaching you about spiritual fatherhood because, because of this. Even though I'm a spiritual mother, but my husband is a spiritual father. Amen. My father is a spiritual father that spiritually covers us as a spiritual family and 500 churches all around the world. It is a waste of your time to just come to Rainfire Church and to just be like, oh, I go to Rainfire Church. If you don't understand how to put a demand and let your spirit say, I want that, I desire that, and to plug in and to connect, how to do that? How do you plug in and connect? It begins with your heart. How do you plug in and connect? You serve. How do you plug in and you connect? You love the man or the woman of God. You see that I'm human, but even still, you love me and you take care of me. I'm not exalting myself over any one of you. I'm a servant of the living God just the same way that you are a servant of the living God. I'm called to serve you. Do you understand what I'm saying? But there is a posture that is not demanded. It's never demanded by the man or the woman of God. It should never be demanded. But when God lights your heart and you desire to serve, it's because now you're coming out of being just I don't want to say a slave because you're not anybody's slave, but you're coming out of that whatever mentality and you're coming into the mentality of a son. You're coming into the mentality of a daughter. And in the same way that naturally someone who is not in the will or someone who is not a son or a daughter, they cannot inherit in the spirit. If you're not a son or a daughter, you cannot inherit in the spirit. Even though my father is my father, if I, if I did not put a demand on him, if I did not plug into him, if, it, if, I, if I didn't, you know, submit myself to his correction, and even when I felt like I was right, God was working things out in me when he would correct me. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But when I made that transition, 
I was able to begin to inherit the spiritual things that belong to me through my spiritual bloodline. Just like all my spiritual brothers and sisters were doing. Amen. And I want to go through this story with you in 1 Kings so that you can get a little bit of a perspective. Last week we talked about whether spiritual fatherhood is true or false. And we went through uh, the word of God and we established the biblical basis for the truth that spiritual fatherhood is a God concept. Okay. Uh, there was a book that I was reading by Dr. David Oyedepo. He has... He is probably the richest pastor in the world now at this point and has one of the biggest churches in the world of over 50,000 people. He had a 20-hour vision or 18-hour vision, open vision, when God called him into the ministry. He writes about this in one of his books. I can't remember which one. He had an open vision, and God, God, the Lord, was talking to him about his ministry. And he said, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this. You're going to need this impartation. You're going to need an impartation of wisdom. You're going to need an impartation of revelation. You're going to need uh, uh, the spirit of faith. You're going to need this. And he said to the Lord, okay, God, give it to me. Right. And the Lord said, no, go to so-and-so pastor that is in this town because the deposit that you need is in him. Why does God do that? Because he doesn't want anybody in the body of Christ to feel like they're a lone ranger. He interconnects us so that we need each other because we're one body. And to, to maintain order and accountability within the body of Christ, it should never be manipulation. But it's about order and accountability. Okay? So 1 Kings, 1 Kings verse 19, I mean chapter 19, I'm sorry, verse 15. 1 Kings Chapter 19, verse 15. Let me know when you find it. Everybody got it? No? Yes? 1 Kings 19, verse 15. And this is how it reads. It says, And the Lord said unto him, Go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, here's the first instruction, anoint Hazael, to be king over Syria, verse 16. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. That's the second instruction. And number three. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abelabelabelu, shalt thou anoint. <laughs> you like that, right? So the son, uh, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room or in thy stead. So we have to understand that Elijah had, I mean, he's been, he has been on the scene. He's been doing some stuff. He's been dealing with Jezebel. He's been dealing with the prophets of Baal. He's been praying down fire from heaven. I mean, he is the man of the hour. He is the prophet to the nation. The people of God look to, he is the prophet who is bringing correction to this idolatry that has come to the children of Israel. He is the man. And in the midst of him being the man, God has spoken to him. The fire came down. It consumed the prophet prophets of Baal. They killed the, all the evil prophets. They established once again the worship of the true living God. He is the man. And many times in ministry, when you are on the scene and you are hot and popping and you are at all the big conferences and you being on the stage and women thou art loose and you doing this and you, you can get so caught up in your light and in your shine that you forget that greatness without an inheritor means nothing. I can be the bomb preacher all day long. I can carry the anointing and sing until you see the angels fluttering their wings. But if after I'm gone, I have not imparted that spirit into anybody else, my time has been wasted. Because it feels good. Your ministry will bless people for a season and for a time. But the truth of the matter is, is that anointings never die. Holy Ghost, I thank you because you're helping me right now. Anointings never die. Do you understand that the anointing of Bishop Mason that founded the church of God in Christ is still in the earth? Do you realize that the anointing of Moses is still on the earth? Do you realize that the anointing of Jesus and of Paul and of John and the apostles is still on the earth? And it's trans oh my God, it is transferred from generation to generation. The anointing of Catherine Coleman travels from generation to generation. The anointing of the spirit of faith that was in our spiritual 
father Kenneth Hagin goes from generation to generation but there has to be somebody that will receive the mantle there has to be someone that will put a demand on that impartation and say hold up wait a minute you carry something and I want it why because once that that fleshly body leaves this earth that anointing gotta keep on working Your flesh has an expiration date, but the anointing that you carry has to keep on working because there's a work that has to be done and that work is kingdom work. It don't start with you and it don't stop with you. So that's why we can't get all grand and arrogant and proud when God is using us. We have to understand that even when your season comes and you at the top and you the bomb and everybody's buying your tapes and your CDs, you better spend some time you better spend some time raising up spiritual sons and daughters that will carry your mantle and be rejoicing when they become greater than you. Why? Because you see that what you have passed on has increased. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So God, I feel like a real preacher this morning. So God comes, he comes to Elijah in the midst of everything that's going on to have a conversation with him to give him instruction his season and his time was not up yet he was still on the scene but God knew that he had an allotted amount of time left on the earth and God knew the spirit that you carry has to be transferred to somebody else so he gave him three instructions in the midst of all this conversation one you're going to come and you anoint this one king you're going to come and you're going to anoint so and so king but then I need you to go out of your way and I need you to find somebody and his name is Elijah he's at his daddy's house go get him and you will anoint him to be prophet in your place because when I remove you I need him to step in and continue the work Amen. verse 19 mm -mm -mm -mm. so he departed thence and found Elisha the son of Shaphat who was plowing so he wasn't, he wasn't nobody special. He was working at his daddy's house. But God chose him. We don't question why God, he chooses who he chooses. Why he chose me, I don't know. Why he chose you, I don't know. But you know what, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. He chooses who he chooses. Dravis, he chose you because he wanted to choose you. Gerardo, he chose you because he wanted to choose you. Stop asking, well, God, watch. I can't do it. No, you can't. But that's why we got the Holy Ghost. Because he can do it through us. You understand what I'm saying? So he goes and he's plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12. And Elijah passed by him. And cast his mantle upon him. Wow. Wow. <laughs> See, this, this mantle thing is for real. Right. It's for real. Right. He cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen. So imagine this. He's working. Elijah walks by and takes his mantle and just throws it on the boy's shoulders and keeps on walking. My God. Just keeps on walking. Wow. Wow. Because when there's going to be a father-son or a mother-son or a mother-daughter in the spirit relationship, I, as a spiritual mother, can see in the spirit that there's something that you need from me. I can see it. That's why we met so long ago. I can see in the spirit that there's something that you need from me. But it's not until you recognize it. I can't help you if you don't recognize it. So Elijah throws the mantle on him and keeps on walking. And inside of Elijah, something jumped. Something leaped. Something said, hold up, wait a minute, this is... Because your spirit has to bear witness. See, I was walking with my natural dad for years. Since I was born, obviously. But I didn't start really putting a serious demand. I mean, I was traveling. I was going on tour. I was doing this. I was recording with Donnie McClurk. And I was, you know, I had kind of had it going on. You know what I'm saying? But none of that, I mean, it was great and it was awesome. But I was not conscious. We were in the same, we lived in the same house. He was my dad. Yeah. But it wasn't until I recognized that there was something on the inside of him that I needed. I had to acknowledge, hold up, 
I'm about to miss it. If I don't get in line in the spirit and start eating from his tree and start receiving from his spirit. Every time I listen to him preach, I say, God, I put a demand on his spirit. God, I put a demand. God, give me the hunger that he has. See, that's why it's so it matters if your pastor is an adulterer. It matters. I know your grandmama went to that church. I know. I know that your granddaddy's name is on the cornerstone because he was one of the founders of the church. I know. I understand. But it matters. And I'm not here to judge nobody. I can fall and mess up like anybody else. I am human. But it matters. I'm sorry. It matters. If somebody's messing with little boys, it matters. If somebody is messing with a secretary, it matters. Even if you never know, it matters. Why? Because when you submit yourself to a pastor or a spiritual leader and you are eating from their fruit, the fruit that's going to be produced is going to be good or it's going to be bad depending on what kind of tree it is. So yes, it matters. Church is not just a corporation. Church is a living institution and the head of that church is Jesus Christ. So it matters. So I can't come and stand up here and say, well, I'm just human. I'm just human. No, if I'm just human, then I need to get somewhere and sit down and y'all either need to find a new pastor or a new church or y'all need to pray me through until God restores me to the place where I can once again stand in purity and in holiness because if you got a dirty faucet or a dirty pipe, the water that comes out is going to be dirty. That's right. See, I can't act a fool and live a life of sin and then come and pour out water even though I'm not the source. The, the source can be pure. But if the pipe is nasty, I'm sorry. If my life is nasty, if I'm dirty, if I'm sinful, if I'm arrogant, if I'm proud, if I'm lustful. If, see, that's why I stay in God's face so hard because I know without him I'm a wretched mess. But when I'm in him, he makes me holy. When I'm in him, he cleanses me. When I'm in him, he keeps me. So I stay in his face and I'm accountable. I'm accountable to my leaders. I'm accountable to my husband. I'm accountable. I watch my friendships. I watch who. And I, I, I don't talk to nobody I used to date back in the day. I, I don't keep in touch with them on Facebook. I don't. Why? Because even though I'm not interested in any of them and I love my husband with my whole heart, soul, and mind, I don't want to even crack the door open. You understand what I'm saying? Because you have one little crack and the next thing you know, the devil's busting in through that door. And you say, oh my God, how'd I get here? Let me keep moving. Good God Almighty. And he left the oxen, verse 20, and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, go back, for what have I done to thee? What you talking about? I haven't done anything to you. I just walked by you, put my coat on you. I haven't done anything to you. What, what do you want? And he was like, no, man, there's something that you carry that I need. See, God had already spoken it. Elijah already knew what he had to do. But Elisha had to recognize it. And when he recognized it, it says he went and he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. He didn't leave with Elijah to suddenly be the junior master prophet. Do you hear what I'm saying? He didn't begin to follow after Elijah and suddenly he was, you know, doing tricks and doing you know, bringing fire down from heaven. Because to receive an impartation, you have to go through a season of service. Yeah. Oh, it got really quiet. Amen. I don't, if you're called to me, I don't need you to serve. You need to serve. Amen. Because if you don't want to serve, God will send somebody who will serve. I don't mean that in pride. I don't mean that in arrogance. You understand what I'm saying? God, because it's his work and there is a spiritual principle that says first the receiver of the impartation, the receiver of the mantle, one has to acknowledge it, number one, 
And then number two, go into a season of service, however it is that the Lord places on their heart. So there are many people here that they serve in different capacities. And for the most part, it's not things that I have asked them to do, but it's things that God has placed on their heart to do. I didn't ask Miss Margaret to go buy no chicken yesterday. Miss Margaret knew we needed some chicken, so she said, you know what, Pastor Joanne, I'm going to go buy some chicken because I know that you, you all needed some chicken and the budget was a little short. I'm going to go buy some chicken. She didn't ask me for no receipt. She didn't ask me for no money back. She didn't ask me to be reimbursed. She went and got the chicken because she wanted to bless God's people so they could eat some good chicken out in that heat. Amen. And cooked it and cleaned it and seasoned it. I'm not saying this to glorify her because I'm sure she's embarrassed right now. But I'm saying it to help understand that when you, when you have a revelation of something, you don't even know why you want to do it. You just know you want to do it. You don't even know why you want to do it. You don't even know why you want to help at the church. You don't even know why you want to come and clean. You don't even know why you want to be part of the worship team. You don't even know why you want to help with the administration. And you, you drive 45 minutes every time there's service to open the church and turn on the lights and, and, and put up the sign and count the offering and, and get the envelopes and, and, and go to the store to buy community. You don't even know why you want. And people saying, there's churches that are closer to you. Why don't you go to a church that's closer to you? It don't cost so much gas. And, but you don't even why, you don't know why you want to go. You just want to go. You want to serve. This is why. When you want to serve, it's because you've acknowledged and you've seen there's something. There's something. I'm a spiritual daughter. I'm a spiritual son to this person. And I want to serve what they're doing. I want to serve. I want to serve. And it comes out of your heart. So Elisha, he comes and immediately begins to walk with Elijah. And it says, and he ministered unto him. Okay? So we're going to go forward and we're going to go now to 2 Kings. So, of course, obviously, when you have time, I encourage you to go through and to read all the different things that began to happen as Elijah and Elisha walked together. Okay? So I'm sure that Elisha saw when Elijah might have been in a bad mood every once in a while, I'm sure that he saw, because prophets can be a little testy. Yes, they can. It's one, it's one, of, the, you know, one of the negative things of having a, pro a prophetic anointing. You can, be, you, know, you can be a little rude sometimes. I'm sure that he, he encountered him when he had bad breath. I'm sure he encountered him you know, when, when he was not under the power and the anointing and he was just in his natural yeah. you know, self. But he didn't get familiar. He didn't get familiar. He did not, he did not uh, discount or disrespect the anointing and the call of God that was on Elijah. Sometimes that's a problem with husbands and wives. A wife can become too familiar with her husband because you see his flaws. You see that maybe he's not as organized as you want him to be. Or maybe you feel like he's not as spiritual as you think he should be. Or you feel like he don't pray as good as you pray. Oh, I'm preaching good right now. I, you may not want to say amen, but I'm going to say it anyway. You may feel, woman of God, like your husband is not in the appropriate position or place. So suddenly, because we don't like to feel insecure or unsafe, we begin to step up and take places that don't belong to us. Amen. Thank you for being a witness. We get in positions that don't belong to us. We start making decisions that we're not the ones that are supposed to take. We try to get in the position of the man because we don't feel like he's adequate. And God is saying, I'm not going to bless you, woman of God, until you get out the way. Get out the way and get somewhere and pray and stop trying to do the job and the responsibility that belongs to your husband. Pray him into position and still remain in a posture of respect and a posture of love. Because if you are the bomb and your husband is struggling, then you're both struggling. I'm very clear of that. I'm very anointed and I'm called of God and all that. But if my husband is struggling and my husband can't get it together and my husband needs help like he did this past week, I'm going to put all my little stuff on hold. You understand what I'm saying? I done burnt my eyelids this week looking at registrations and who's coming and who's not coming and calling people and sending out emails. Why? Because if he's not successful, if what God placed in his hands does not take off, then you know what? That doesn't just affect me, but it affects my whole family. So I need to hold your arms up so you can be the bomb. Because when you're the bomb, we are the bomb. You understand what I'm saying? 
and when I sow that into my husband, God will bring people around me that will hold my arms up to say, Joanne, we're going to help you hold up the, uh, the work of Rain Fire Church. So go ahead. I'll preach for you on Tuesday so you can go and help your husband. I'll cover prayer service so you can go and help your husband. Why? Because it's one kingdom. But in the kingdom, there are positions. Yeah. Amen. And everybody got to play their role. Just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean I'm the pastor of my house. I'm not the pastor of my house. I am the wife to my husband. And it is an honor that God has given me to serve him and to love him and to help him and to hold his arms up. Why? Because when I love him and when I honor him, God blesses me. Yeah. The word of God says, do all things as unto the Lord. Elisha did not become familiar with Elijah. He could have because he saw all his faults. He was there. He was with him. He could have missed it and been like, no, nah, man, this joker, he leaves his dirty socks everywhere. You can't, how, how are you going to be anointed by God? Are you always leaving your dirty socks around for somebody else to pick them up? You become familiar. Yeah. But he didn't become familiar. Let's go to 2 Kings. I don't even know how I got on all that. But I guess somebody needed to hear it. Amen. Second Kings chapter 2. Hmm. So God knew that, there was, that, that Elijah's ministry had an expiration date. And he spoke to him. He says, go and get Elijah because he needs to be prophet in your place when you're removed. Okay? So they begin to walk together. Elisha begins to serve Elisha. They have this bond or this friendship, and he's watching, he's serving, but he's learning. He's watching, he's serving, and he's learning. He's watching, he's serving, he's receiving. Okay? So you serve and you give, but when you serve and you give, you're sowing a seed in order to get a return. Okay, that's why even the, the material seed that you sow into that person that you see as your spiritual mother and father, it brings back a different type of blessing and return upon your life. That's why as a church, we take 10% of our tithe and send it to our spiritual father. Why? Because we want to sow into the life of the man of God, understanding that the overflow of blessing, abundance, wealth of knowledge, everything that he is will be returned to us, okay? So chapter 2, the expiration date is coming close to an end. And it came to pass, chapter 2, uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Joker, I have been with you too long. Brother, there is an inheritance that belongs to me. I've been walking with you. I've been serving your food. I've been, you know, uh, watering your camels. We have been taking trips together. We have gone far Far and wide together and I know that God told you that I'm supposed to receive what you have I'm not letting you go you are not leaving out of my sight as Miss H Terry always tells me we're joined at the hip you go to Africa I'm going to Africa you understand what I'm saying and I, I respect those relationships so we join you ain't going nowhere Pastor Joanne he uh, Elijah was saying to Elijah you better get it out your head because wherever you go look Naomi Ruth your God will be my God. Wherever you go, I will go. Why? Because that was her spiritual mother. Because she was connected to her in a way that she knew. I know that you're acting crazy right now, Naomi. I know that you're bitter because you've lost your husband and all your sons. I know that you're acting a fool. I know that you're trying to change your name because you're bitter. But I know who you are in the spirit. And I'm not going to miss my blessing by disconnecting myself from you. So where you go, I will go. Your God will be my God and your people will be my people. And guess what? She was right because the wisdom and the impartation that came from her spiritual mother spoke to her and said, this is where you need to go. This is how you need to act. This is what you need to say. This is the field that you need to go into and just lay at his feet like this and say this. And the next thing you know, she was married. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Because your spiritual mother and your spiritual father that have a true impartation of God, they have a key to your future. They have a key to your destiny that unfortunately you can't unlock by yourself. I know that might ruffle some people's feathers because we can all go to Jesus on our own and we can. But for some reason God set it up this way in the spirit. 
because we have to be connected. There was a deposit and a key inside my father that I needed, and God needed me to get it so tough that he made me be born to the man. You understand what I'm saying? Because he needed me to see it. He needed me to drink it. He needed me to get it all the way on the inside of me because of what I'm called to do. Father, I thank you. He said, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Verse 3, and the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, the prophets come bearing, bearing good news. Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, yea, I know it. So he was already beginning to walk in the prophetic. He already knew. He had already a hunch. The Holy Spirit had already let him know, hey, the transfer is getting ready to happen. Don't let him, don't let him out of your sight. When he's in the commode, stand by the door. I mean, don't let him out of your sight because it's happening and it's happening now. He said, yeah, I know it. I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho and the sons of the prophets that were in, at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, yeah, I know. Hold your peace. Shut your mouth. I already know. And I'm in position. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord for the third doggone time, as the Lord liveth. <laughs> Hear me, sir. <laughs> Come on now. As the Lord liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. Verse 7, look at this. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they stood by the Jordan. See, there's sons and there's daughters. And then there's onlookers. There's sons and daughters. And then there's onlookers. There's, there's those that come to see. There's those that come to see. What, what, what's that Corey and Joanne doing over there on Highway 5? They just come to see. And Joanne ain't, Joanne ain't no preacher. She used to be an artist. Who she thinks she is? They come to see. You understand what I'm saying? That don't bother me not one bit. Because I'm so sure in who God called me to be. So sure. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. They come to see. But the problem is, is that the transfer never falls on those that come to see. The impartation and the deposit from the spiritual mothers and fathers never goes on those that come to see. It comes on one, those that are called. Because I'm not called to everybody. And not everybody's called to me. There are people that are called to Paula White. There are people that are called to Creflo Dollar. There are people that are called to Bishop Bronner. There are people that are called to Cheryl Brady. I'm not called to everybody and everybody is not called to me. That's why I'm not stuck on numbers. You understand what I'm saying? I'm stuck on God. Let me not lose one that's called to me. If this is it and it's just it's just us and we rolling, yeah. then what you know what? Let's roll. Amen. Get what you gotta get. Right. You hear what I'm saying? Because I ain't worried about all that other stuff. Yeah. My reward comes from the Lord, not from man. Yeah. So they came and they stood, they stood afar off. What verse am I in? Okay, here we go. Thank you. See, I, I, I like that you pay attention. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they stood by Jordan 8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together, smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. So Elijah takes off this mantle, the mantle, the same mantle that he put on Elisha when he walked by him. Is that rain? I was about to say it finally released. <laughs> He's been waiting two days to rain. So he takes that same mantle. He folds it up. And he takes the mantle. And he hits the water. And the water split. And both of them walk across on dry ground. Come on now. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Do we need some more power? Absolutely. They too went over on dry ground. Verse 9. And it came to pass. When they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, 
ask what I shall do for thee. Ask, oh my God. Ask what I shall do for thee. This is after he had acknowledged that he was connected to Elijah. After he understood that there was a treasure, uh, something on the inside of him that he needed. After he, he spent his season serving the ministry of this man. He said, ask. 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 Good Lord. What I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee. Let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Let a double portion. See, he didn't say, I just want to do what you did. See, a spiritual son and a spiritual daughter should always be greater than their spiritual parents. You may start small, but you need to end up greater. You may start small, but you, if I recorded three albums and you, if you're called to music ministry, then you need to record 20. If I open a hundred churches and you're called to start churches, then you need to open a thousand. Yeah. If I have one business and you have the anointing for business and ministry, then you need to have 20. Yeah. Why? Because the sons and the daughters should always have more than what well, I want my, my Ariana and my Hadara to be greater than I've ever been. Yeah. And a true spiritual mother, a true spiritual father that has the heart of God will never be jealous of the promotion of their spiritual children. Will never be jealous of the blessing of their spiritual children. Will never be blessing of the favor. Well, you know what? If God opens the door for you to be at the White House and I ain't never been to the White House, I'm just going to sit on my porch and smile and say, that's my baby. Amen. Look at that day of them doing the, the work of the Lord. And being happy and excited, knowing that God allowed me to be a small part of the greatness that's on the inside of you. It's an honor to be a spiritual mother who, to those who see me as a spiritual mother. It's an honor. It's not the other way around. I know that you give me your honor, but it's an honor for me. Because you see the anointing continuing. He said, I pray thee that you would give me a double portion of thy spirit. Not of the anointing. He didn't say, don't give. I don't want a double portion of the gift. I don't want a double portion of the miracles. I don't want a double portion. He said, I want a double portion of the spirit. Of the spirit that you carry. I want a double portion of your spirit to be upon me. That is why when I watch my dad, I say, I put a demand on the spirit spirit of the man of God. I want to receive of the spirit of the man of God. That's how I make my demand for what I need. He said, I pray thee a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. And if not, it shall not be so. Yeah, you didn't served. Yeah, you didn't walk with me. But if you don't, if you're not, if you're not, if you're not in position if you don't stay in position. See, many times people are in position, but you let somebody talk you out of position. Right. Why are you going over there to that rainfire church? That's not the biggest church in the city. That's not, they ain't got it going on like that. This and this and that. Whatever. I go there because I'm called there. I go there because that's what God told me to do. I feel committed to there. I'm sorry. If you don't get it, it's okay. You can go ahead and go to your mega church and enjoy your mega church. I'm going to go ahead and go on over to my rainfire church because that's what God told me to do. You understand what I'm saying? Do you know how many jobs as music minister I turned down at different churches? When I was an artist, people, people with massive congregations, because I was a bilingual worship leader. Churches in Texas are here and there, and, when, and, and it gets serious. We'll pay your house, we'll pay your moving costs, we'll give you a salary, you only need to be here two Sundays out of the month. I mean, seriously, and I'm sorry. I serve at my dad's church. I serve at my dad's church. And that's why I believe that now that I'm in the position of leadership, God will also give me people with that same heart. He said, give me a double portion. He said, it will be so if you see me when I'm taken. But if you don't, it will not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. <laughs> and Elijah saw it and he cried, listen to this, my father, my father. 
he acknowledged him as his father. Yes. Now we see in the beginning of the story, he had a mother and he had a father. Right. But he had an understanding that this person was his spiritual father. That this person was the one that was leaving him a spiritual legacy for what he was called to do. And when he was taken up, it's like in, in, the, in, the, in those two statements, you said, basically he said, you said if I saw you when I go, that that double portion would belong to me. Father, my father. And what happened? <laughs> what happened? It's right there. The chariot of Israel. The horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his clothes. He took hold of his clothes and he, he rent, he, he tore off his own clothes. He tore off his own old self and his old identity. And even though he had walked with his spiritual father, he took his old self and tore it off because he knew that he was getting ready to put on a new anointing. He was getting ready to put on a new spirit. He was getting ready to go to a new level. What he had served for, what he had been faithful for, what he had waited for, what he had been committed for, the transfer was now. So he rent his clothing and he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Verse 14 and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said where is the God of Elijah and when he had also smitten the waters they parted hither and thither and Elijah went over when did we see this first happen just a little while ago when they were together and he saw that he was walking with his spiritual father. And he saw how his spiritual father took the cloak off and folded it and hit the water. And he saw the water split and they both walked across on dry ground. See, the reason why my worship team is able to worship without music and pour out their hearts before God is because they see their pastor worship without music and pour her, off, her heart out before God without holding anything back. Not caring if there's five people or a hundred people in the church. And they've seen me do it by myself. They've seen me do it with CDs. They've seen me sit on the piano when I have played the piano in at least 10 years and dust off my little four chords because our musician moved to another city and said, we're going to worship God even if we got to sing the same song for the next 20 minutes and make sure you just stay in F major. And I know these three songs. You can choose any of these three songs, but don't you sing another song because you're going to be by yourself. But because they see that in me, he saw it. He saw it in his spiritual father. And when he grabbed that mantle and he came back, he said, if he did it, I can do it. Amen. Because now the mantle belongs to me. Now the double portion. He said, if I saw him leave, I've seen him say other things and it happened. I see him when he, when he spoke to the widow and this and that person died. And he said, get up. They got it. He said, if I saw him leave, that the double portion would belong to me. And when that mantle came down, he grabbed it by faith and he walked right to the situation and said, boom, open up. And he walked across the dry ground like he did with his spiritual daddy. Did exactly. Did exactly. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also smitten the waters, they parted and Elisha went over. Look at this. And when the sons of the prophets, see, you got to remember the, pro the, the little clique of prophets. Yeah. Remember they came to watch? Yeah. They came to see. They saw it all go down. But they were not in the position to receive the double portion or the mantle. Why? Because they were just onlookers. Yeah. They were not sons. Yeah. They were not called. And the sons of the prophets, which were, I'm almost done, which were to view at Jericho, saw him. And they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. You know how many times people look at me, that people that know my father's ministry, and they see me and they're like, man, you carry your dad's spirit. You carry, when you preach, you stand like him. When you talk, you talk like him. When that prophetic finger come out, we all get nervous because we know that it's on and popping. And we know when Joanne has left the building and the Holy Spirit has taken over. And when you step into it, you look just like your dad. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. They looked at Elijah and they said, the spirit of Elijah, doth, they were able to see that he had received the spirit of his spiritual father. And they saw, they saw, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elijah and they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. They were like, oh, hold up. There's a new chief in town. The major prophet is gone, but he left a son 
who carries his anointing and not just his anointing, but carries his spirit and not just one portion, but a double portion of the spirit. And so they came and they bowed themselves to the ground before him. And you have to understand because of the impartation that I've received from my father is one of the reasons why people feel so connected to my ministry and they're willing to come no matter what the age they can be older than me, they can be younger than me, but they come to submit themselves to my ministry because of the double portion that I've received from a man of God that has served and has labored over 40 years for the Lord, who he himself submitted himself to his natural and spiritual father, my grandfather, who pastored a church in Puerto Rico, who was pastoring that church until he died when he was almost 98. My father cleaned the toilets, my father drove the church bus, my father was over the youth ministry, my father was over the young people's ministry, Ministry. He was over the worship ministry and there was just congas and guitar and he was right up in there driving everybody home from church, picking up everybody on the way from church. And it wasn't some nice little clean toilet. It was like the outhouse kind of situation. But because he loved God, he served in his father's house and God took him to a whole other level. My, my grandfather was an illegitimate child. And responded to the voice of God that brought my father into the earth. He received the call of God. Then he brought us into the earth. We received the call of God. It's not always a natural and a spiritual inheritance at the same time. Sometimes it just works out that way. In our case, it's worked out that way. But in the same way, the spirit goes from me to you. It goes from him to me. Then it goes from me to you. And with every passing, it increases. With every transfer, it increases. With every move, it gets greater. In the same way that sin multiplies from generation to generation, the spirit of God and the impartation that comes from our father Abraham and it went to Moses and it went all the way down and then it finally got to David and then it went from David to, to this son and that son and Obed and so and so and Shaphat and Meshach, Abednego and Daniel and all, all of that. And it's all the same spirit that is coming down a spiritual line and it got to my dad which then got to me and somehow God caused you to be drawn to be a part of that it's his wisdom he knows what you need for where you're going I don't know where you're going but he knows what you need so that's why I gotta be the right kind of wife because if I'm cutting up and acting a fool y'all would be cutting up and acting a fool with your husband I have to be a good example but yes, I could be a woman that's called and, a, uh, and be a woman of ministry, but I also am a submissive wife and a submissive woman. Right. Yeah. And I don't operate in the spirit of Jezebel. And if you know you come to counseling with your husband and you, and I'm not going to just take your side because I'm a woman. Right. Come on. Oh. Right. Um. And they bowed themselves before him and they said unto him, behold now, there be with, with thy servants 50 strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. Let's, let's look for him. The spirit of the Lord has taken him up and has cast him maybe somewhere on a mountain. Say, they, they didn't even understand what had happened. They trying to go find Elijah. Well, maybe the spirit of the Lord took him to another mountain. Maybe the spirit of the Lord, and he was like, go ahead, y'all, go ahead if you want to go look for him. Go ahead. At first he said no, and then they insisted, and he felt bad. So he said, okay, go ahead. And then after they had searched, what, what does it say, three days? And they came back and we didn't find them. And he said, I told you, you wouldn't find them. And immediately he goes into a new city and he begins to work miracles. Now, historically, historically, as I was studying this, I thought it was amazing that historically, Elisha did twice as many miracles as Elijah. Twice as many. So when he asked for the double portion... He received the double portion and he literally did double the miraculous works of what his spiritual father did because it's what he demanded. It's what he received. It's what he served for. He was faithful and he was at the right place at the right time at the moment of impartation. I don't know when that moment is going to be for you. I just encourage you. To get an understanding in your spirit of why God brought you here. God didn't bring you here for no celebrity. God didn't bring you here for no state-of-the-art lights and sounds. and Because you never know. Okay, we have in camp. We taking the stage. We taking the lights. We taking everything. Y'all going to have a tambourine and some chairs in Rain Fire Church. Because <laughs> we're using the sound system at camp. We were using the chairs at camp. We were using everything at camp. You understand what I mean? 
I was making somebody laugh because when we first got the Faith Farm, when you guys get to come, you're, you're going to love it. But one of the things that I was, we were all laughing because I said, yeah, it was not uncommon for me to go into a room to flick on the lights and suddenly I realized the lamp was gone because my husband took it to the farm. <laughs> so the same thing that he does there, he'll be doing it in church. He's just coming, oh, the stage is gone. Okay, well, that's why we just keep on moving. But know why you're here. And understand how to make the best of it. And to be in a, in a, in a heart posture to receive what God has called you to receive. And not let anybody, not let anybody pull you away from that. If I was an adulterer, if I was a fornicator, if I was just somebody who was just living off of their gift or off of their name or off of their fame and trying to make you be faithful to that, then you would have reason. But if you see my life, and you see the fruit of my life on the scene and off the scene, and it bears witness with your spirit, then that's when you make your decision based on what your spirit has perceived. Amen? Because I want you to receive the maximum impartation for where you're going. I want you to receive double of my spirit, which is the spirit that I've received from my father, which is the spirit that we received from my grandfather. It's a spirit that he also, my father, received from Kenneth Hagin. Because if he had not received the spirit of Kenneth Hagin, I would not have been alive. My mother was bleeding through our, her entire pregnancy with me. Entire pregnant puddles of blood constantly. And anybody that's been pregnant, you know that automatically means miscarriage. You know that that automatically, they were saying, bleed one more time and you are going to have to abort this baby. Because she will be born without fingers, without toes. She will be mentally retarded. There is no way this child can survive with the type of blood that you have lost. And daddy was just listening to Kenneth Hagin. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the words of God. And you speak to that mountain. And it will be removed. And your faith can make it happen. And your faith will make the impossible manifest. And your faith, your faith, your faith your faith to the point that yeah he truly carried the spirit of faith because my dad received that spirit of faith and because of that spirit of faith I am here don't tell me impartation is not real let's close our Bibles Father I thank you I thank you God because man six months ago I wouldn't even have been able to preach this message God because I was so used to being a daughter I didn't know how to be a mother I was so used to being the one to serve and to honor my spirit that I didn't know how to allow other people to serve. I didn't know how to allow other people to help me because I felt like it was my job to help. It was my job to serve. It was my job to be the daughter. But now I understand, God, that if I don't have an understanding that I'm a mother, then I cannot release what I have to release to the sons and daughters that you have called to be with me on this journey, Father God. And they're not with me on this journey for me to hold on to them forever. If you call them to receive it and you send them out, God, then I send them with blessing. Knowing that whatever the need is of Rain Fire Church, you will always provide it. Be it worship team, be it ushers, be it musicians. Be it, Father God, we don't lack for anything. And we thank you for that. So I thank you, God, for the, for the understanding. God, if, if more than anything, the word today came and it helped just, it just helped it make sense. It helped, it, it helped your children to understand, why do I feel like this about my church? Why do I feel like this about my pastor? It just helped it make sense according to your word and according to kingdom principles. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, that you will continue to add the sons and the daughters that you have designated for this house to be with me and with Corey, to go into all the world and preach the gospel that those that you have called. Father God, that they will be able to be planted and not be removed until they get whatever it is that they're supposed to get. And even when you do send them, God, that there's always a connection of love and of respect and of family. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pray you were blessed by the word this morning. Isn't he good?